dentists will claim that they can do something called a biological root canal. There's no such animal as a biological root canal. The root word bios means life. All the life force has been removed from this tooth. What I do want you to take notice of is that the, in this x-ray we are looking at the root tips themselves, which don't always show up in every x-ray. Once a year you will have a set of x-rays taken called bite wing x-rays based on the standard of care in dentistry. This allows your dentist to see in between the teeth looking for decay at the earliest stages. Where are the root tips? They don't show up in this typically taken x-ray. Let's look at this x-ray and see what we see. At the bottom of the root you notice that there's a dark area. That's an area where bacteria may be eating the bone. If we looked to the left on top of that, we notice what looks like a screw. That's actually a pin that is placed inside the root of the tooth in an effort to try to support the crown that is above it. If an endodontist gets involved and decides to try to save this tooth at further cost, then the right root will probably be cut off, which is called an apicoectomy. They will just saw off part of the root tip and clean out that area. If that fails, then the tooth will be cut in half, which is called a hemisection, and then a new crown will be placed on top. Realize that having the root canal, the crown, an apico, and a hemisection may still result in the tooth having to be extracted. The mantra in dentistry has been to save a tooth at all costs, and yet, all of a sudden you've got eight to ten thousand dollars invested in that tooth which is just really not acceptable. See somewhere in the 1920s to the 1930s dentists decided that they could perform a root canal or what I call taxiderming a tooth. But I don't really believe that there was much discussion with physicians because if they had talked to a doctor and said hey doc we're going to taxidermy your patient's tooth and they asked what does that mean and they would give an explanation. Well, your, your patient came in and they had a finger that was gangrenous and what we did was made an incision in the side of the finger and we pulled out all the meat and then we stuffed it with silly putty and we sewed it closed. Well, a physician would absolutely go berserk because they realized that the means that the body would have to deal with a low-grade infection for the rest of that person's life and it would be healthier to live without the finger. There isn't a place in medicine where they decide you have a bad gallbladder or a bad appendix that they're simply going to stuff the organ and put it back in. It's removed for the sake of the health of the individual. Let's look at this x-ray. First off, what I need to tell you is this person is having absolutely no pain. The area that is above the root tip has become reinfected either because the tooth next to it has abscessed or because the root canal is dumping the bacteria into the bone. The point in showing you this is so much bone has been destroyed that two teeth were required to be removed. I would again get back to you asking your dentist to take an x-ray of the root tip of any root canal teeth that you have and simply ask him to take a few moments to compare it to the year before to try to prevent spread of infection to an adjacent tooth. Remember that a dentist is trying to save a tooth at all costs because that is the standard of care and their licenses work under that. But they do try to reduce the bacteria that's in the tooth. One of the things that they're using now is ozone injections because ozone can be used in a swimming pool to reduce bacteria. It's thought that it may reduce some of the bacteria around the tooth. Here's where my problem comes in. If I have a dead carcass sitting on my kitchen countertop and it's got bugs eating it, I call an exterminator to come in to spray for the bugs, but they don't remove the carcass because that's not their job. At some point in time, if the carcass isn't removed, new bugs come in. I don't know whether that's two days, two weeks, two months, or two years later, but at some point new bugs do find the carcass and the process starts all over again. When we're looking at the laser treatment of root canals, the crown is removed and the putty is removed in an effort to be able to shine the laser into the center of the tooth. Here's where the problem comes in with the laser. A laser can only travel in a straight line. So the canals that are the straight ones have the opportunity for the laser to get in there and be able to kill the bacteria. But all the bacteria that's in the sideways tubules is sitting there. Man, 
You better be glad you're not eating lunch down there because those guys are getting nuked. Then the new putty goes in, which still doesn't make a very good seal, and a new crown goes on, which puts them back into their anaerobic environment, and all the bacteria in those sideways tubules goes back to multiplying all over again. Let's talk about the laser for just a moment. The laser is a light and can travel through a tooth if directed through a tooth without a crown. This will not remove the dead flesh, but may nurse the tooth for a period of time to help control the bacteria. By now you can understand that a root canal cannot be sterilized. As a result, the trapped bacteria can mutate and migrate to infect either your heart, kidneys, eyes, stomach, or countless other body tissues. This theory is called the focal infection theory. It means that a person can have an infection somewhere and that the bacteria involved can be transferred by way of the bloodstream to another gland or tissue and therefore start a whole new infection. Here we have a tooth that's been extracted three weeks after it was lasered. We sent it to Affinity Labeling Technologies to find out the level of toxicity for the tooth. The five enzymes that have to do with the inhibition of ATP are at 38 percent, which means that the ATP in the body is going to be reduced. Adenosine triphosphate is what your body uses when it creates fuel in the body. You take in food, take in sunshine, and you create ATP. This tooth would reduce the body's ability to create ATP. This is the same patient. Three other teeth had to be removed at the six month mark after having the laser treatment done. Look at the toxicity level. It is at its peak. It can't go any higher than five. Look at the inhibition percent that those three teeth inhibit the body's ability to create ATP by 78 percent. That's remarkable. If you will look at the black arrow at the center of the screen, you'll notice that it's pointing to a broken root tip. Now the reason the dentist didn't realize that it was there is because he's only been taking those bite wing x-rays that we were talking about earlier. There are also some other areas of the bone that when looked at through the eyes of a conventional dentist, they would think that the areas are perfectly healthy bone. And yet when some additional testing is done, there becomes very high suspicion that it's not healthy bone at all, that in fact there may be voids in the bone. Here's an actual photo after the surgery was done. See the arrow where the root tip was, and then you'll notice the areas where the bone tested that it wasn't very healthy we actually were able to determine that there were some voids in the bone through the surgical procedure. Every tooth is connected to the jawbone by way of a ligament. Every bone in your body is connected to another bone by way of a ligament. In dentistry, it's a periodontal ligament. Dentists are trained to remove the tooth, but never told anything about removing the ligament. By having this in place, where the blood clot occurs sends messages to the brain telling the body that it needs osteoclasts and osteoblasts. It needs the blood clot to be broken down and carried away and the area to be filled in with healthy bone. Having that ligament there is like buying a brand new watch and the second hand is not running, but then you notice there's a slip of plastic between the battery and the watch. You pull the piece of plastic out and the second hand starts to work. That's the problem with leaving the ligament in place, is that we oftentimes don't get good healing of the bone. This slide is out of one of Dr. Bocot's books. It shows neuralgia-inducing cavitational osteonecrosis, which is a very fancy name for an area of dead bone that can cause pain in the jaw. There are also other problems that could be similar to this one called bone marrow edema where the blood flow can get in but it can't get out. It's kind of like someone who has asthma where they can take a deep breath in but they have to push to get it out. That creates problems in the bone itself. These areas in the jawbone 
can be created from things other than just extractions.